are set to do battle. In charge, James Owens, the first Wexford man to handle an O'Hurling final since 1998, and it gets underway. And straight away, it's Kilkenny who tried to make the first breakthrough here. Conor Fogarty laying it off inside here, picked up well by Colin Fennelly, and that ball has got away to the left hand side. Yeah, Gerard's expected Dahi Burke on in centre back uh, to mark Richie Hogan, Irla Tanyan here out in the right wing on TJ Reid. And uh, I see Jason Flynn here out at right half forward. We're expecting that Connor Whelan inside in the corner. So Walter Walsh gone in corner forward on Johnny Cohen and Parik Mannion over picking up Owen Larkin. A lot of switches. Dohi Burke incidentally did mark uh, Richie Hogan for the first half of the Leinster final, limited him to one point, and then Richie was moved by Kilkenny. Be interested to see just what happens as this develops. Killian Buckley with the ball in his hands. Down went Cyril Donnellan, and the referee calling across. And just having a very quiet word with Killian Buckley. Ends up being a free in anyway. The first chance of a score here for Galway. And Joe Canning is the one who's come out to take it. This is about uh, 46 metres out. On a very, very still, calm afternoon here. Perfect afternoon for Hurley. And now Galway look to make the perfect start. Giving himself every opportunity, Joe Canning. And they're away to a flyer. First score of the match. Yeah, he'd be happy with you know not that hard a free to start with, and that leaves the nerves. You know, I think if Galway were to win, that man's going to have a huge game. You see the hand bandage, 28 stitches in that earlier in the summer, and it's held him back a bit. But he's key man today for Galway. Well, they have an option, of course, at Jason Flynn, who could possibly take frees as well. As Owen Murphy takes this puck out, aimed down towards Richie Hogan. So good in the air, his leg, leg very heavily, heavily strapped, hasn't done any training at all with hurling, that is, over the last week or so. Getting caught there was Kieran Joyce, ball flashes back out here as far as TJ Reid, sniffing it across calmly, into the middle to Michael Fenley, having a go from there, putting it over beautifully. Team's level, the first for Michael Fenley. Yeah, Joe, great score there, Galway did very well, some great uh, hit there, uh, Kieran Joyce put back by Jonathan Glynn but kept the composure TJ Reid lovely little pass out to Michael Fenley and he couldn't believe the time he had straight over the bar Galway's puck out taken by Colin Callanan up there towards wing forward over there is Jonathan Glynn the big strong man who had such a good game in the quarter final picked up well however and taken out of danger by Porrick Welch again Jerry Aylward coming forward trying to get possession back as far as Welch once more diagonally across here to TJ Reid who's moved inside in goes Irla Tanyan as well to pick him up. Runs on Jarrell, we're trying to get to it. Here's an opportunity, Walter Welch brilliantly defended. Superb piece of covering that time, it was Johnny Cohen. And Gola survived this particular onslaught. Back out as far as Jarrell when it comes, tricky angle, and he makes light of that and puts it over the bar. Great score. A point to settle Jarrell were down in his first All-Ireland senior final. Yeah, lovely score from a tight angle. Michael Fenley involved again. He started very brightly for Kilkenny. A great block there. As you say, here's Walter Walsh coming in. Blocked down there by Johnny Cohen and very, very important interception. Cohen getting the stick to it. Timing was so perfect that time. Straight through the centre towards Cyril Donnellan. Can't get to it. Instead, it's picked up by Conor Fogarty once again. Oh, hand pass intended for Richie Hogan. Somebody... Galway bodies converging on it. So important that Galway get up to the tempo quickly and bring that same level and intensity that they had here a few weeks ago against Tiferary. Andy Smith. They're all still captive. Into space here. Opportunity for Joe Canning to come across. Get the ball under control here. Take on Joey Holden. Have a go and put it over. Team's level. Joe Canning second, first to come from open play. Four minutes are gone. Yeah, Jared, that score made by some brilliant tackling out the field by Galway. Lovely ball by Andy Smith and Joe showing uh, Joey holding a clean pair of heels there and over the bar. And Galway's tackling so far very, very good. Their intensity is right up there. Owen Murphy just taking his time before delivering this one into the half forwards. Owen Larkin available but couldn't get to it instead it's Porrick Mannion and just to make a really good start here Andy Smith half blocked down Shane Prendergast able to come across and take it beats off the challenge of Conor Whelan 
And out over the sideline, that one's gone, so it's uh, going to be a line ball to Galway. Richie Hogan here was mentioning the fact that he has been in difficulty with injury. He's got a bad back as well and uh, having major problems trying to prepare himself adequately for the the, uh, the real challenge of an All-Ireland final. Not ideal. No, Jeremy, see his quad as well, heavily strapped, and uh, I believe he hasn't trained in the last couple of weeks, so not the ideal preparation. David Burke here. Comes back once again to Jonathan Glynn. And Johnny takes off, slips it outside to his left-hand side, Aidan Hart, seen as an attacking force, but this one has gone to the left. A really good chance, one they should have availed of. Yeah, poor right, but I think Aidan Hart, since he switched back from midfield to wing-back, it's been huge uh, in the development of this Galway team since the Cork game, and uh, normally he tapped that over. Once again, just watching TJ Reid here at left half forward as that ball comes towards him here. His mark of this afternoon is Forrick Mannion, a way out from full back the last day, even from corner back as he was programmed. Here he is once again under pressure this time for John Victor Aylward, and uh, the referee saw a foul committed, so it's going to be a free out for Galway. It'll chop down there on the Galway defender. So a free from about 45 metres out from the Galway goal. Well, he'll be anxious to uh, get rid of the something of a nightmare he had here a couple of weeks ago against Seamus Calden, of course, playing full-back on that occasion, conceded three goals to uh, Calden, who had uh, a height advantage, a skill, and, well, I'm not sure what we could say, a skill advantage, but certainly has terms of forwards. He was uh, really at his very, very best that afternoon. And that one has gone out off a, a Kikini stick, and it's gone for a 65, the umpire has decided and then he's been overruled, the referee has said ball touched one of the forwards last Yeah, interesting to see Jason Flynn going back there to his own 65 to take that free, it's a long, long way out and uh, just watching uh, TJ Reid trying to bring Earl Latanian across the field, he's after running 60, 70 yards they're off the ball This next puck out here, down into the half forwards once again, right hand taking it by TJ Reid and TJ Reid settled himself but didn't finish as he was hoping to do so made that lovely run across here to get on that ball Brian Cody 14th All-Ireland Final 16 if you include the uh, two replays in 12 and uh, in 2014 as well Calvin again pucking it all the way in towards the inside forward line this time touched down by Conor Whelan but not to a colleague Kenny were anticipating, Conor Fogarty got onto it quickly here, surrounded immediately by three, four Galway players. They're certainly bringing their intensity levels, Conor Whelan back here, and that ball hit beautifully and hit over the bar. Lovely point once again by Joe Canning, and that's three so far, and he's got all of Galway's scores. Yeah, well, Joe, we saw this game, Conor Fogarty sweeps back there all the time, picks up that ball, but he was closed down immediately. But look, you can see it here, three Galway forwards around him, and Conor Whelan showed great vision here when he wins the ball. He's only a young player, picks it up and flicks it out to Joe Canning, and Joe did the rest. What a year it's been for Conor Whelan, the number 10 of Galway. That one is pumped out here, added to by Owen Larkin. One down there for Michael Fenley to go and chase after. It's Jerry Elwood instead. Back in here, interesting Larkin. Still Larkin, the chasing back was Porig Mannion, did really well initially, helped out by John Hanbury, and Hanbury completed the clearance. Up it goes towards Conor Whelan, breaks inside here beyond Cahill Mannion. Trying to make some inroads, but in the end stopped there, and Porig Walsh gets it away. Beautifully outside here, out to the man who's come out from the corner, Jerry Aylward, and that one has got away to the left, missed opportunity. A couple of chances going astray now for both teams. Galway edging it, three points to two. Early stages, only nine minutes are gone. Quick puck out. Cyril Donian came racing across there from the centre to the left and then settled his feet and drove it brilliantly over. Got three great points in the second half of the, this year's Leinster final against Kilkenny and he started here very well indeed and Galway lead by two. Yeah, brilliant puck out by Colin Callan. Uh, Sir Donnelly made the run and he picked him out brilliantly in a super score. Galway will be delighted, I think, with his start. They all look very comfortable and uh, John Hanbury there, big clearance. Because then he had two half goal chances since he started the fluff both of And that puck out from Owen Murphy straight into the hands of Aidan Hart, operating at left half back. Great ball in, Joe Canning, let it run on. That's dangerous. 
and that Kilkenny defence does not look all that terribly settled so far. Ball cleared out, out to the wing to Porrick Welch. They've been under a lot of pressure, the Cats, so far. Now they can counter at the other end. Hanbury coming across, still in his first championship season. It'll block down on that by Walter Welch. They've moved forward. It's like a replica of what uh, Tipperary did when they moved in big Seamus uh, Callanan here a couple of weeks ago in the semi-final. Back out as far as Larkin once again. 45 metres out, beautiful shot, nice point. First for Owen Larkin in this match, a real high achiever and a commanding figure. Always and ever for Kilkenny, one between them. Yeah, an important score because Galway had had a good spell. There was Owen Murphy running out over the ball. And Joey Holden, looked, uh, he was very cool there on his own end line, but it could have been a goal there but for Galway. Potentially very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. Back once again in their half-back line, Kieran Joyce covering and clearing for Kilkenny, but out over the far sideline. And the landsman over there, Johnny Ryan. Has his flag raised. Here in Joyce, a major match to play now, part to play in this match at centre half back, anchoring things together there. Gillian Buckley one side, Torek Welsh on the other. Yeah, so, so far, Jared, we're getting it very hard to get on the ball. When they do, they've been closed down so quickly, they've had very little influence. We haven't seen Killian Buckley at all, and just Torek Welsh with a couple of clearances. It's going to be David Burke who will hit this. Goes a little short this time. And uh, Cyril Donlan was up over the outstretched legs of one of the Kilkenny defenders. It's uh, Kieran Joyce who's marking him. Yeah, and he's drawn him out at the centre, Jared. That's the problem. Kieran Joyce very strong, very comfortable down the middle, but Cyril Donnellan is moving him left and right, and he wins the free there. He scored a point just before that as well. So far, tactically, goal will look uh, very smart today. Another chance for Joe Canning then. That means he scored seven goals and 54 points against Kilkenny in eight and a bit championship matches. But only one win, the Leinster final here in 2012 against the Cats. Not an easy free, but Joe then is a real master, and he's got his fourth. Yeah, and goal we're going nicely. Yeah, his eye is certainly in, that's two frees, two from play already from Joe in the first 11 minutes, a dream start. You see TJ Reid in, corner forward now as well on Johnny Cohn, because again you talked about the height advantage, there's a huge height advantage there with TJ Reid. I just find it interesting that Walter Welch has been moved into full forward. It's like they are replicating what Tip were able to do with a big man, a, an able and skillful man in there at full forward. Out comes Richie Hogan with his back. And Walter Welch has a chance here. Lays it off to TJ Reid who scores. Typical Kilkenny, typical TJ Reid. He did it in the semi-final against Waterford. He's done it here in the 13th minute. And all of a sudden Kilkenny go into the lead by one three to five points. Yeah, very unselfish play by Walter Walsh, he just threw the pass a yard there. Um, I just had mentioned TJ Reid going in there, you know, on the mismatch, but Walter Walsh used his strength there, a little flick to TJ Reid, he doesn't miss him there. So a timely reminder to Galway not to take Kilkenny for granted at any stage in this match. Cyril Donnellan back here, whipped away by David Burke, into the inside forwards towards Cahill Mannion, hasn't gotten on the ball so far. Murphy. Johnny Glynn was trying to link up with Mannion, but it went astray. Murphy has it, drives it back down towards TJ Reid. He's got one, he'd love another one. Goalkeeper comes out and spoons it away, but not terribly far. Richie Hogan's able to get onto it, looks around to see what's on here. Here, Latanian goes chasing after him. Back over it comes to Colin Fennelly, trying to step inside. A couple of players there, he was being fouled. Helmet pulled off him as well, which is a red card offence. But the referee has indicated it's going to be a free anyway. Chance for Kilkenny to extend their lead. Well, in the little tussle there, the helmet went flying. Didn't see anybody try to deliberately take it off him. And the referee just reminding him he can't play on the uh, park without the helmet attached. So yeah, I didn't see it. was hard to see there. It looked like David Burke, maybe the hand was in there. Dangerous thing to go near the helmet now with the rule the way it is. It, it didn't come off itself, so uh, somebody must have given it a, a bit of a yank in there. As TJ Reid takes the free and, as usual, puts it over the bar, so now he's got a goal to go with a, a goal, a, a point to go with the goal he got after 13 minutes, and there it is, slotted home calmly after Walter Welch was involved in the build up with it. One four to five points. Had looked good for goal with us, lots of time. David Burke comes back and knocks it over brilliantly. It's a good game, started well. 
Yeah, that's a super score. That's straight off the training pitch. Beautiful ball down to Glenn and David Burke off his shoulder and over to Barron. Again, I mentioned Aidan Hart moving to wing back. David Burke moving to midfield has been hugely crucial for Galway as well this summer. Full forward line. Moment reads uh, Connor Whelan, the number 10 in the corner, Joe Canning and Cahill Mania. Ball tucked out by Kilkenny. Again, they were targeting TJ Reid, this time back to help out Aidan Hart. Blocked down well by Colin Fennelly. They have to go again, Hart. Hart kicks out this time. Now this are is Johnny Cohen. Slips away from a couple of challenges. Three men after him. Off his left-hand side. Not the greatest of clearances. Taken down well by Paul Murphy. Hand pass back outside as far as Kieran Joyce. Kilkenny lifted by that goal a few moments ago here. Suddenly more assertive. John Hanbury back out for Galway. Good ball, really good ball. Out into the centre as far as Cahill Mannion. who slipped away from corner forward. And Flynn, his first touch, his first opportunity. Seemed like it was on his way initially, but then maybe there's a light breeze out there. It uh, drifted away to the right eventually. Disappointment for Galway and for Anthony Cunningham. Yeah, good hurling though. John Hanbury played a lovely ball out there to, to Cahill Mannion and he picked out Jason Flynn up the wing and Michael Fenley notably struggled to get back onto him there. You know, he looked to be uh, 10, 15 yards off and he couldn't close the gap. Murphy's puck out once again. Once more it is Owen Larkin they are looking for. Closed down this time once more. Torek Mannion trying to get away from the shackles that time from the attentions of Richie Hogan, cleared out eventually up to a two-man inside forward line. Connor Whelan trying to break it down. There's a man in support, it's Joe Canning. Eventually a chain Prendergast who seemed to commit a foul there, and the referee did blow his whistle. Notice that foul by Prendergast, and it's going to be a free in. Shane Prendergast, the 29-year-old from Clara, the guilty party this time. His dad, Paddy Prendergast, played in the 1987 final. He was the captain of Kilkenny that year when they lost to Galway. But Paddy has three All-Ireland medals in his collection. Shane hoping to win his first here this afternoon. Likewise, Conor Whelan there, the 18-year-old who was fouled. Yeah, Jared, definitely the Galway full forward line at the moment had the beating of the full Kilkenny full back line. Maybe the same down the other end, even though Galway looked more comfortable than they did the last day. Uh, but inside, Conor Whelan... You know, he's very fast, and for a young player, he's shown great leadership so far. Well, so, four so far, now five points for Joe Canning. The third time in this game, 17 minutes are gone. Good contest. Yeah, Jaron, a good response by Galway. We saw it against Tipperary every time a goal went in, they came back into the game, and you see it again today, a sign of a team that's growing in confidence. It's a, a very positive thing to see. Owen Murphy. Switching it this time to right half forward. Colin Fennelly goes out, breaks it down to himself. Very gifted, very determined player. An unpredictable talent. Gets it in here, Michael Fennelly, his brother went down, then Ger Aylward, and then there was a foul committed just around the 20 metre line, and it hops up a little bit here. It's going to be a free in at the end of it all once uh, James Owens, the referee from Wexford, has restored Ori. was causing the problems, laying it inside here to his older brother, who is Michael, the midfielder. And then tempers flare just a little bit. Finally, common sense restored. Referee had a quiet word with a player or two. No names taken, nothing like that. It's going to be a free in. TJ Reid will take it. Yeah, James Owens, first final, you know, so far, firmly in control, uh, very cool as well, and uh, handled that well there. There was not much in that. He's moved it in now, obviously, the talking continued. Well, it's a very central position, as you can he see. Can go for this. Do you think he will? He could. Early in the game, isn't it? And ill afford to do this, to give opportunities to players like TJ Reid to crack a goal from this position here with the team's level. Will we just content in the first quarter of this match just to tap it over? Yes, he is. Goal and three. Goal and two, rather, for TJ Reid so far. And it's uh, Kilkenny edging it by one again. Brian Cody, with, uh, it's been reckoned, an 82% championship record of success. That is some record for a man who's been at the helm since 1999. This is today, his 79th championship match in charge. Down on his hands and knees there is Cyril Donlan. Surrounded by Kilk. Joey Holden going 
down into the opposing half, inside the opposing 65 in the end, the ball handle on the ground, it's got to be a free for Galway, and once again it hots up a little bit. Nobody wants to yield an inch here. And he picked it up off the ground, that's what the referee had spotted. Yeah, great tackling again by Galway. The Kilkenny players aren't getting a second on the ball, and Joey Holden, he just lost control, and that was it. Here's interesting, Michael. They've brought uh, Jason Flynn back out to take this. Obviously, we're talking about Joe Canning's hand injury as well, and Flynn is such an assured free-taker normally, but this is inside his own 65-metre line. So we're talking about a distance of 85 metres. Can he make it? Yes, he can. board and the teams are level and they're level for the fourth time yeah he's the option for the long range once he scored a great one here against Tipperary as well a very important one and uh, great to have that option it leaves Joe in around the goals then if it drops short as well Andy Smith has had to go off the field for a moment just to change his shorts in the interest of decency we're not going to show him that back out once again towards Killian Buckley stray ball going astray David Burke able to pick it up Putting the pressure there on Shane Prendergast as Conor Whelan was uh, looking at the ball, following the flight path, tumbled over. Prendergast able to get it away out here as far as Owen Larkin. Larkin going around one, going around two. And in the end, the referee decides he takes too many steps. And once again, calm has had to be restored. There's a real tension about, it, isn't there? All of a certain needle there. Perhaps it comes from all those recent matches they've had, including the Leinster final, including Galway's great desire to win an All-Ireland. Absolutely, Jerry. Yeah, it's an All-Ireland final. You know, he broke the tackle there, and uh, see Joe Canning out there, the tackling of the Galway forwards. I've talked about it a lot since the start of the game, and it's been a huge feature after the game. Uh, since that Leinster final, the Cork game, the tip game, the forwards are is the first line of defence, and they're set the example up there. Five points so far for Joe, the 26-year-old from Port Dumna, who wasn't even born when, when uh, Galway last won the All-Ireland. Long time ago, 27 years, 1988. And they made a good start, and he's now got a sixth. One five to nine points, Galway by one. Owen Murphy's puck out towards Richie Hogan hasn't really managed to greatly influence the match so far and this time the referees had too many steps taken Blair is indicting his Owen Larkin Brian Cody not one bit happy about that Owen Elliott was the sideline official at the uh, receiving end and this was the run through here a moment ago by Owen Larkin the referee you can see rotating his hands there clearly indicating step and uh, I think that's why Brian Cody was demonstrating. Once again Jason Flynn has gone back inside his own 45 metre line this time to hit it. It would be an outrageous score if he can make it. It is an absolutely stunning, audacious shot that time by Flynn. I'm sure that's an absolutely huge strike from Jason Flynn. He's having a brilliant year for Galway. He missed the Leinster final, he was injured, he came on scored a great goal and that's Galway are fired up for this and they're really settling into the game and Put it up to Kenny now. Coming across here is David Burke doing a lot of covering on the half back line, even though he's wearing one of the midfield numbers, number nine. They get that ball up as far as Scott Mannion. What a great year he's had so far. Remember the three goals he got against Dublin and the replayed Leinster champion. Mannion dodges around a number of defenders, finally gets it back as far as Jason Flynn hits it under pressure and it's going to drop away to the left-hand side, and that becomes a, a fourth wide for Galway. Kilkenny with three so far. Aidan Hart has had to be replaced by David Collins, who is, of course, the team captain. That perhaps is an injury? He doesn't look injured. It's a big call early in the game. It hadn't been anything scored off by Colin Fenley, I think. Whether it's tactically or not, he doesn't know, he's asking the question going off the field there, and I wouldn't blame him. It's early, and uh, it wasn't obvious that there was an awful lot happening down his wing. He caught a couple of balls. Forrick Mannion getting... ...taking on Paul Murphy. Donlan 
firing it from near the sideline, but away to the right, and a missed opportunity. Wasn't an easy shot. One yeah. so far for Cyril Donnellan. Well, Galway having a period of dominance here. That's a couple of wides now. They really, you know, when they're on top, they need to be taking those chances. So the first change has been made by one of the Belgian teams, as that is here, Latania taking it down from the clouds and blocked well by Owen Larkin. It's going to be a line ball for Galway. Great blocking by Owen Larkin today, playing in his 53rd championship match. We have seven All Ireland medals so far. Yeah, great catch there by Latania. Normally. Bring Tanya back when TJ Reid went inside, but outside of that, John Hanbury's on Walter Welch, Corrie Mannion is on Jerry Aylward, Dahi Burke is on Richie Hogan, and most of them haven't been in the game so far. Tanya to hit this. Made a decent enough connection there, inside towards Jason Flynn, and it breaks kindly for him, tries to get away from Kieran Joyce, has to go a second time to pick it up in along the end line. Inside to Whelan, and Whelan under pressure knocks it over the bar. Point for the young man, 18-year-old from Kinbara, a cousin of the late Niall Donoghue, who played here in 2012, and Shane O'Donnell, who got three goals in the Court Clare match in 2013. He's got one here, and it's now 11 points to 1-5. Yeah. Maybe a year ago, God before, go for his own score there, but he played a low ball across, and a great pick-up by Whelan, and... Uh, you know, quick feet and stuck it over the bar for a lovely score. Galway, very fan. good. Galway fans encouraged so far. That was taken down brilliantly by Dohi Burke, the number seven there. What a great catch that was. He's hoping today to win his second All-Ireland medal of the year. He was here with Corrafin footballers in the club final on St. Patrick's Day. Played brilliantly at midfield against Slough Neal from Derry that afternoon. Today in the colours of Galway hurlers and playing uh, centre-half back, really, as it were, for Anthony Cunningham's team. Doing a good man-marking job. Once again, it's Jason Flynn who's come. The last one was around the... ...in to attend to him. Once again, Jason Flynn striking it immaculately. He's got three. His free-taking has been a feature of the first half. Yeah, and to Kenny's lack of discipline, uh, Gerard, that's seven frees now that Galway have scored in the first 27 minutes. On the other hand, uh, TJ Reid has only scored two frees, and that's five points, and there's four points in the game. And without that TJ Reid goal, you'd wonder where Kilkenny would be at this stage. It's been an important score for them, it keeps them in touch, four behind. Once again, Galway come out with it, and a first touch for David Collins then. Hoping that he will be picking up the Liam McCarthy. Got fueled and brilliantly done by Jonathan Glynn. Glynn, who's... Is Joey Holden under pressure, gets it out, gets it out really well, as far as Porrick. Well, just for a moment there, I thought Jonathan Glenn was going to get another goal in the championship for Galway, just as he did in the quarter-final. Dohi Burke, back out. John Hanbury, firing it across diagonally. Once again, over there towards Conor Whelan. Marking him is Shane Prendergast. Prendergast leaves it behind. Whelan's causing a problem. Whelan has it. Killian Buckley in there to try and win it back, and in the end, Buckley does get possession and clears it away from his own end line. Andy Smith rising up for it here, but brilliantly collecting it is Owen Larkin. Back as far as Kieran Joyce, the centre half. This time with. Colin Fennelly there lurking, TJ Reid once again coming in, Johnny Cohen trying to get possession, David Collins on the thick of it there, the number 22, who has replaced Aidan Hart, and the referee is going to in, go in there and probably throw that ball up. It's ten minutes now since Kilkenny have scored in this contest, a real cause for concern for them. That flies back out there, away off the stick of Porrick Mannion, and breaks further, kindly, for Andy Smith. Smith, not a very good ball, there are too many Kilkenny players there waiting for it, and one of them is Paul Murphy, almost striding out, put under pressure by Joe Canning, very good pressure, that ball should have been cleared and wasn't, Jonathan Glynn gets it back, David Burke sizing up the angle, having a go at it. Defeat from this angle here, it seemed like he might have put it over, not so. Six wide instead. 
Well, Jared Galway are all over Kilkenny. I know I'm stating the obvious here, but you know there's only four points in it. There should be seven, eight points in it. Uh, Galway have missed a few chances. I'd say uh, Kilkenny can't believe they're only four points behind. And really, Galway, if they're going to win this, they need to make the most of this dominant period because you expect Kilkenny will come back into it. Here's Richie Hogan. They need a big performance from him. He's got one. That's one back. Well, if he can get going, if Walter Welsh can get more into the match, they need Ger Aylward as well and Colin Fennelly to be contributing a little bit more. 12 points to 1-6, three points the margin. As you can see, five minutes to go to half-time. Towards Aylward, Galway's defenders are sharp, they're incisive. Getting the stick in there, working with one another, not the greatest of clearances. Walter Welch, out of the match against Galway in the replay, when he got 1-3 three here three years ago. Easy one for Calvin. Back out from the goalkeeper to David Burke. All the way down along the line as far as Cyril Donlan. Races across, missed the last one, scored an earlier one. And the referee again has decided he took too many steps, and the referee has been very insistent on implementing that rule to the letter of the law this afternoon. So far, James Owen's doing a good job. Yeah, I don't know. He didn't. He must have. He did, there was a little touch there from his hand into his hurl, and he took a few steps again. Unless the ref missed the touch, there wasn't a whole lot in that. Kilkenny fans will feel they need the score here. Can they get it? They certainly can. It could have gone anywhere. It was Jerry Elward in the end who popped it over the bar for his second point, but it could just as easily have dropped into the back of the Galway net. Yeah, nobody took control. You need to be cutting out that ball and let it slip inside and could have been in the goals. Good response by Kilkenny, I'd have to say. The last two scores, they looked you know, to be under serious pressure. They're back within two points again. Once again, Colin Calden fucking it out, playing in his 27th championship match today. Over towards right half forward, drops nicely with Jason Flynn, got there ahead of Gillian Buckley and knocked it over the bar. What a brilliant score! It's his fourth point of the match, the first come. First touch, he flicked it down to himself and in the one move and put it over the bar. Super score. Some brilliant skills in evidence here in this All Ireland hurling final. TJ Reid Colin Fennelly now he's in the clear out comes John oh, that's uh, Johnny Cohen very deliberately taking him down it's a big call now for James Owen it's just as well he's not playing another code yeah and watch it here he comes across higher on the neck very dangerous tackle and uh, be very lucky to escape a red card here Referee deciding to take a moment and have a chat with Johnny Ryan about that. So what's it? Johnny Cohen, who was the Young Hurler of the Year in 2012. Under pressure here. Moira Ishka playing advocate. Well, there's a little lecture, so it would indicate that maybe it's got to be a yellow card. It is. He's lucky. It's uh, the first yellow card of the match. And that was a neck high challenge. Well, look, Jared, he's, he's lucky, but to me, it is a red card. I have to say, uh, very, very dangerous tackle, high into the head, neck area, uh, could have caused serious injury. I know it won't be popular for saying it, but I think it, I think that should have been a red. TJ Reid's going to take the result. And, uh, he's not going to run through. Yeah, the Kenny crowd very subdued, hardly a whimper out of him when that went over the bar, and Brian Cody trying to drive them on now from the sideline. Should be pointed out, Michael, that around Croke Park today, just judging by the splash of colour, I would think Galway are outnumbering Kilkenny by about 3 to 1. Three to one and bear in mind, Kilkenny. Has only got a population of 80,000, so they've achieved way above their numbers over the years. Overachieved in many respects. The greatest hurling county. David Burke getting it back here. Taking it, David Collins. And there to look at this and to watch where it lands and lands over the bar. There's the great man.
position in this match as we approach half time and they lead by 14 points to 1 8, 14 points to 11. Back come Kilkenny from the puck out here. Walter Welch, who hasn't really got into the game so far, hefty shoulder there on Andy Smith. Jerry Elwood and Smith shaping up to one another for a moment there. Pressure now is on Paul Murphy. Smith onto his midfield partner, David Burke. In as far as Joe Canning, who once again comes drifting out towards the middle of the park. Trying to leave a few gaps inside. Connor Whelan is playing this match as if he's an old veteran. And that's another beauty. No, it's not. The goal, the crowd again behind the goal, deceiving us somewhat. They were convinced it was gone over. Joe's convinced it was. Adamant, I think they should have a look at it. It's an All-Ireland final, that's why the technology was brought in. Just listen to the... ...crowd here, they certainly feel that one was a point. One minute of additional time is going to be played. Here, Latanian went up one-handed here, didn't make it. Went off a Kilkenny man, so it's uh, going to be... A Galway sideline ball. And Jerry, I think what we're seeing to great effect again from the Galway forwards today is the rotation. Joe is out centre forward now for the last six or seven minutes. He scored a point, could have had another one there. Uh, Cahill Mannion's gone in in the corner. Uh, Connor or Sir Donnell a full forward. You know, they're, they're making different moves, different changes, confusing the Kilkenny backs. They don't know who they're picking up. Fourteen scores to nine as the referee blows for half time. Anthony Cunningham geeing up his team. They've done a really good job in the opening 25 minutes of this match. Joe Canning got seven points. Terrific contribution. We've seen Jason Flynn hit long-range points, get a lovely point from uh, play a little while ago. A goal by TJ Reid after 70 minutes. Really important because it has kept Kilkenny motoring. They have work to do at half-time here in the All-Ireland Hurling Final. It's Galway who lead by 14 points to Kilkenny's 1-8. It's you're struggling to see a pattern. If you know. Yeah, it's, it's it's frantic stuff. Yeah, it's shapeless in some ways, Michael, it would be the word I'd use. And I'm surprised at Kilkenny. It's very much been played on Galway's terms so far. But there's a, you know, you saw Aidan Hart was removed. There was no sentiment, just the no ruthlessness about Galway that I've sensed. And again, when Kilkenny got the goal, like against the, the Tipperary match, up the field and levelled the match and went ahead again and, and drove on and I think, you know, it's there for them if they really want it. Time for us to head back to the commentary box to Jerk Canning and Michael Dignan. Second half underway, no changes made by either managers at the start of the second half. One change, of course, made in the first half, David Collins coming up for Aiden Hart for goal. the intensity levels immediately here because it's got to be important as Cyril Farrell was mentioning the opening 10 minutes usually means a, a 10 minute spell in which Kilkenny will try to dominate and Galway are prepared for that or are they? TJ Reid selling a dummy there with a possible hand pass inside it goes towards Colin Fenley Fenley again with three or four defenders around him and John Hanbury is one of those John Hanbury old style full back play gets it out here down towards Cyril Donlan once again, covering beautifully back there is Shane Prendergast, out as far as Porig Welsh it comes. Here's Porig Mannion at a very, very good first half to his brother Cahill. And the Mannions combine, can't produce... ...to the 45-metre line, and again, minding that line with great vigilance as uh, Ir Latanian. It's like you, can he have extra players back there? One of them is Paul Murphy, fumbled. And that might allow Cyril Donald to come in here. And then there was a, a trip. But well, he's been told, continue. He seemed to be tripped by Porrick Welch. In the end, the free goes against Galway and incenses most of the Galway fans around me. Yeah, we'll see it again here. Porrick Welch comes in. He went to flick the ball. He flicked the hurl instead. I think he fell himself already. He wasn't tripped around. I'll be watch here. And he gives a free out then for overcarrying. Uh, look again, the second half just started the very same as the first half. Got Second half has 
his first as well. Very important contribution, and the Galway fans still booing the award of that free against their team. Well, the feature of the first half, there was that Kilkenny not as dominant in the air as they normally are. The Galway backs obviously worked very hard on it since the tip match. They're breaking a lot of the ball, and Tariq Mannion in particular picking up an awful lot of ball in the Galway, around the Galway half backline. Brian Cody geeing up his team. There's not much need to do that. Michael Fennelly once again getting it back here to Richie Hogan, trying to work himself more into the game for the second half. Back once again to Fennelly, the big man. Leaves this one inside here, it runs beyond Jerry Elward. There's work to do for Colin Fennelly to try and get to it. And one back once more by John Hanbury. Good play by Hanbury, and Hanbury turned back towards the crowd. And a bigger influence on the game, having a very good game today, but he didn't look up at all. Everybody's clearing straight out over the sideline. This is going to be taken by Porrick Welch. Player has played at wing back midfield, wing forward in each of his last three championship matches against Galway, reminiscent of his brother Tommy, who's watching on. That sails over the head of Dohi Burke here. He might need help from Irlitanian. And they still can't get it away. Burke comes in here. The challenge, however, is uh, deemed to be an illegal one on Jerry Elward. Chopping down onto the stick rather than trying to get the ball away. Good discipline. I think that's a very hard yellow card. You know, I know he went, he was a little bit high, but he, he was, was only a little flick away, and it, it's a yellow card. And well, you compare that with the uh, misdemeanor of Johnny Cohen earlier on. They're both yellow cards. Yeah, well, it, Johnny Cohen should have gone. I think uh, most people agree on that one. I think so. TJ Reid hitting this free and hitting it straight over. That's a goal and four points now for TJ Reid. And Jerry, we saw this last year in the final at half time, just talking to a few lads. Last year they all thought Tip were going to kick on. This year they're all saying goal. I was just reminding them, you know, Kilkenny had this habit of coming out and starting the second half very well and taking over the game. They're not the brilliant cats for nothing. That's down there by Cyril Donlan looking for somebody to come on to it. That somebody was David Burke. Hit across as far as Cahill Mannion. Andy Smith there in the thick of that with a white helmet, number eight for Galway, but won again by a man with a white helmet, that's Porrick Welch. Good clearance under pressure, somehow managed to get it away towards Owen Larkin. They wait for it to come out, TJ Reid picked it up, then showed awareness down towards Colin Fenley. Brings John Hanbury out of position, the fullback. Now he's under pressure. Fennelly bouncing it on the ground before trying to set something up, looking for an option here, hasn't too many options, held up really well by Hanbury and by Porrick Mannion, two young, inexperienced... ...with the... ...have a word with the umpire, but that's going to be a 65, first at the beginning of the second half. Yeah, Colin Fennelly took far too much out of that ball. When he got it originally, Jerry Elwood was loose outside him 20 yards away. Great defender by Galway, but Colin Fennelly, you know, not the player that he was over the last few years, a little bit hesitant on the ball, and I'd say Richie Power, you know, will be introduced at some stage, maybe for Colin Fennelly in there. Well, great play by Hanbury and by Mannion. When you consider all the gifted players that Galway have had over the last 27 years, and now three players today in their rookie season, Hanbury, Mannion and 18-year-old Conor Whelan, they all have a chance of winning an All-Ireland at their very first attempt. But right now, they're only a, a point in front, and that lead may be expunged in just a matter of moments here, because TJ Reid is, Reid is ready to line up the 65. You see Michael Fenley shoving Andy Smith back. I know that there's a massive increase in Kilkenny. Something at the halftime cup of tea, and the words of wisdom from Brian Cody, no doubt, as well. Well, I was watching him there from Walter Walsh hit that ball into the goalie's hands just before half-time and he danced some jig on the sideline so I'd say they got it fairly hard at half-time already. Fennelly and uh, Andy Smith, two opponents in midfield at the receiving end of a, a lecture here. There could be a card as well, it looks like there is going to be because the referee's riding away. So Michael Fennelly will become the first Kilkenny player to have a yellow card and 
Is it a temporary substitution that is required as well? Andy Smith also gets a yellow card. And now I think he's saying to Andy Smith, you've got to go off and be replaced to have uh, the wound attended to. So they're going to have to make a change. Four points so far as well. Now, can he tie up the match here? He most certainly can. 110 now becomes 111 to 14 points. And there are 42 and a half minutes gone in this match, and the teams are level for the fifth time. Yeah, Jared Galway need a score. They haven't had a shot at goal since half time. Kilkenny completely dominating around the half back in the midfield now. Number 17, Fergal Moore, has come on for Andy Smith as a temporary sub. And there he is with the red helmet. Fancying his luck here as well, but uh, doesn't quite work out for him. Just scored once ever in the championship. Today coming on to play in his 36th championship match. Now 33 years of age. Part of the experience that... Uh That ball should have been flicked in in front of him. Once more, we're watching TJ Reid here try to knock it forward into the path of Michael Fenley. Work to do here. Good play by David Burke. Got across here, deflected it away. He really is a terrific midfield player, David Burke. He's been in top form this year. Team's level. Tense All-Ireland afternoon here at Croke Park. Line ball coming up, and once again it's going to be TJ Reid who will take it, the 27-year-old. Awkward angle, just tries to get it back into play. David Burke got his stick to it, then he was uh, fouled, I thought, and the referee has blown his whistle this time, and it is going to be a free out for Galway. Knocked to the head there. I think it was Colin Fennelly who was coming across who caught him. I'll just see it again here. And you watch it all eyes on the ball there. Another yellow card is dished out here by our match referee, James Owens. None whatsoever until that one was issued to Johnny Cohen just before half-time, and now all of a sudden we've got quite a few. And Fergal Moore has now left the uh, field and been replaced once again by Andy Smith. Andy Smith's a vital part of this Galway team. They dominated the first half. Opening minutes of the second half, it's been very much Kilkenny. Now let's see where this game is going to go. Great catch by Jonathan Glynn, blocked down. Again, they try to make some inroads here, and Kilkenny's then surround them, and the referee once more steps in, and he will throw the ball in to end the uncertainty. Jonathan Glynn there against Killian Buckley, the number seven for Kilkenny. Pops back out once again, out as far as Torek Welch. Poor loose ball, however, straight to... He'd love to be there lifting the cup at the end of this. He's got a point here. And Galway shoot back in front again by 15 points to 111. Yeah, that's a great uh, score by the captain, David Collins. Andy Smith captain on the day when he's not playing, but an um, inspirational score, but a very poor clearance again. You see a great hook there by Killian Buckley on Jonathan Glenn, but Tommy Wall or Parry Walsh never looked up there and hit it straight down to David Collins. A major spur that time for David Collins and for Galway, but the response is from Richie Hogan. Inevitably, what a player he is. He may be injured, but he's uh, playing to the very best of his ability out there. And a second for him from the sublime hurling artist. Created yeah. space for himself, finished brilliantly. He did, Jerry, a lot of work to do with the... As far as TJ Reid succeeds in that, and Reid then... Big one down towards Colin Fennelly. Yet to score in this match. Here's a chance. Fennelly hooped well by Hanbury. Goes the second time. Stop on the goalkeeper. Johnny Cohen's there as well. It's gone out over the end line. It's going to be another 65. A second for Kilkenny in the space of about uh, 10 minutes at the beginning of this second half. Yeah, great battle development between Colin Fennelly and John, John Hanbury. Watch Fennelly here. Obviously thought his pace would have taken him away from Hanbury, but Hanbury stayed with him and a great hook there. Just watched the way he left in the hurl here, brilliant skill. And did it go out down for the 65, I think. Great save then as well by Colin Callan, I think went out for the 65. 
Seems to be enjoying his afternoon down there. Central position, calm afternoon, very, very little breeze around in Croke Park. One of those perfect days for hurling, and a perfect shot at the end of that from TJ Reid. He's pointed the last two 65s. He tries to G up his colleagues here. Remember, he was the captain in 2010 when Kilkenny lost it to Ferrari. They don't want to lose again. They're going for two in a row. Galway trying to win the title for the first time in 27 years. Great catch, brilliantly done. Knocked away well that time by Walter Welsh, back in a deep position. Beyond Colin Fennelly, Larkin gets there. Hanbury's under pressure. comes to Owen Larkin back into play here to the big man to Walter Welch and Walter Welch calmly dispatches it between the uprights his first point of the match and Kilkenny get another one here and it's Kilkenny 114 that's uh, 70 points to go with 15 and no doubt about it Kilkenny have been the better team in the second half yeah Jaron that switch Walter Welch came out to right half forward at halftime he's playing very deep you saw him catching that puck out Played the ball in, then followed it in and got the score. Great catch there by Johnny Glynn again now. Glynn across here, but across also came Shane Prendergast. It breaks nicely for Connor Whelan. Whelan from a very, very tricky angle. It was uh, far too tricky. Tried to recycle it. Collision between himself and Andy Smith. He's jogging back out, but he looks injured, and... It is going to be a Hawkeye moment, so let's see what happens here. All eyes on screen. Ooh. That was some effort. What a point! Connor Whelan's effort. Stunning! Richard, that shows you. The one before half time from Joe Canning, you know, the technology is there, it has to be used. Conor Whelan uh, poked it in the air that time, it was a 50 50 ball. Some days it'd be given and it wouldn't be. With Hawkeye, that takes that doubt out of it, and it should have been used in the first half as well. Well, in fairness to the officials in Hawkeye, they are looking at this the whole time, and they have a very good idea themselves if the ball has gone. Well. referee in there I think maybe there is Dickie, usually Dickie it's Murphy. Uh, well Dickie could be there yeah. Willie Barrett there as well yeah watch here TJ Reid and uh, I think Andy Smith just held his ground there and that's a soft free now for TJ Reid TJ will be happy to avail of it Andy Smith yeah. has to go off again now this obviously has a blood injury and Kilkenny with six points so far in the second half Galway with just two. I yeah, see a big change in the style of the referee. You mentioned it there in the first half. He seemed to be letting everything go. When you're the referee of a major match and there's no more major match than the All Ireland final, do you let it flow? Do you let the game develop a pattern of its own, or do you come in with cards yeah. immediately? Well, I think the incident with Johnny Cole certainly would have rattled the ref. He'd nobody wanted to send off a player in the Ireland final. It was a big, big call, and he made the decision not to do it. And I think maybe that has you know, rattled him since then. TJ Reid lining this up as Greg Lally is on as a temporary sub on this occasion. And he's uh, missed none of his frees. Flawless as usual, TJ Reid. And now he's got a goal and seven. And ominous for Galway, Kilkenny have really, really begun to dig in in this second half now and really mean business. Andy Smith's back in once again. ...of the second half. So heading into the final quarter of the 2015 final, who's going to win it? Advantage Kilkenny on the scoreboard. But you never know with Galway. And Cahill Mannion, who's yet to score, that one is blocked out brilliantly by Paulick Welch. Or it was Michael Fennelly, in fact, another man with a white helmet who got there. Nine ball, David Burke's preparing to take it. Takes it quickly. 
Two Kilkenny players are there. One of them is Killian Buckley, and Buckley gets ahead there of Jason Flynn. Pressure back in from Flynn. Then it's from Conor Whelan. Got that marvellous last, last point a few moments ago for Galway. Again, it's Whelan. Hasn't ever played in a National League match. Only 18 and playing in this All-Ireland final and doing really, really well. TJ Reid, back up under pressure here. Dohi Burke collects, clears. One man against three defenders. That one man was Cyril Donnell and all the other Galway players had been pulled back in towards midfield. Joe Canning now arriving to put a bit of pressure on Joey Holden. Finally cleared out by Killian Buckley. Yeah, Jerry, get the impression whoever gets the score out of this will be huge in the game. There's after been an unbelievable amount of hooking and blocking from both sets of players. A lot of effort gone into this passage of play. And it might be Andy Smith, but that eventually falls from his grasp and out over the sideline. A lot of players, you know, going back, funneling them back into their own half-back, full-back line and leaving loose men, there's nowhere for the clearances to go, and, you know, it's a long way out for teams to get defensive, there's still 17 minutes to go. It's a peculiar stage in the match right now, it's become a bit of a slog in this All-Ireland final, just to try and achieve absolute mastery. That line ball hit in, Dohi Burke under pressure there, comes to Richie Hogan, Hogan near the sideline. Flick back, TJ Reid gets another opportunity. And then finally onto it comes Owen Larkin. Reid once more. You know, his leadership in the first half, and most of them were going badly. He was winning ball, he scored a good point in the first half. That's another point. His work rate for a man who's won so much and been on the go for so long, it's incredible. And a great leader of this Kilkenny team. Hoping to win his eighth All-Ireland medal this afternoon. And there's that appetite, that desire to win. And it's always there by Kilkenny. And Jerry Elward has a great chance of putting this one over. And he makes the most of it. A third for Ger Elward in this final, and suddenly it is all Kilkenny, and it's been, by and large, all Kilkenny for much of the second half. Four between them. Colm Cavanagh's puck out, or Colm Cavanagh's puck out, I should say. Is one of the players involved? I'm not sure. Is it Joey Holden who was the other one? They've been marking one another. Cyril Donlan saying there was a pull down there. Up they went for it here. Joe trying to come on to it. Not exactly the most free flowing. At the end of it, it's Cahal Manu who comes out, 45 metres out of the referee again, says you took too many steps that time, trying to establish control of the situation. And with 15 minutes to go, and uh, Galway about to make a big change. Connor Cooney about to come on for his 14th championship match. He hasn't played any hurling at all this year, but he's in now, a player who... Can Kenny, you know, Michael Fenley in particular around the middle of the field, very, very influential, stopping the ball going into the full forward where they were having all the trouble in the first half. They've just upped their ante, upped the intensity, and they're scrapping for every ball like their life's dependent on it. This is hit here by the goalkeeper, Owen Murphy, who has never scored in the championship, but it breaks back down here again, and there's a lot of pressure on that Galway defence right now. They wait for it. Dohi Burke trying to get it out, and in the end it is David Collins who thunders out of the back there, gets it away out as far as Cahill Mannion, pursued there by Fogarty. Mannion once again with the hand pass back as far as David Collins, his team captain. Collins 
who will love being part of this on-field action. Hogan bats it down, but well, the man picking it up is here, Letanian. Yeah, been forced, the very hard, been forced to put the ball in high, you know, that suits the Kilkenny bat. And there's lots of them there as well, as well, it seems like they've got an extra man or two each time that Galway tried to mount an attack such as that. Away comes Paul Rick Walsh, left behind, first touch there for Conor Cooney. And again, hit to nobody in particular, the only man down there applying any kind of pressure is Johnny Glynn. Out to Buckley, Buckley the left half back. Masterful as usual, all the way down as far as Colin Fennelly. Bounces around, Aylward trying to steal inside, Mannion trying to keep him at bay, and then in came uh, Walter Welch as well. Away there from Conor Cooney, succeeds, has a go from a distance, 50 metres out. And that one is wide. No need for Hawkeye this time. Or is there? There is. They're having a look. I think TJ Reek, Owen Larkin was free outside, and when he won that ball, maybe a better option. But he, I think, he, you know, he was trying to put a, maybe five points between them, put a nail in the coffin, and uh, he went for it on his own. 117 to 16 points, his team leading here. And let's see what Hawkeye reveals. Is it a point for TJ Reed? Seems to have gone to the post, so it might be a, a Neil, and it is. Neil on score, Cadaher, the score is not allowed. Stays as a four-point game. Twelve minutes to go, plus additional time. Once again, come the tribesmen. Conor Cooney this time. David Burke, back as far as another sub, David Collins. And Collins hits it, and hits it over. Only one point in the championship before, now in his career, and now he's got two this afternoon, both in the second half. And it's a, well, it's a goal between them. 117 to 17 points. Yeah, they're two massive scorers for David Collins. Gall was struggling for scores in the second half. He's popped up with two of them. And here's Richie Power getting ready. What addition that he will be, Richie Power recovered from injury, it would appear. Again, into that right half forward position. And the deadlock finally broken here as Dohi Burke tries to roll it up onto a stick, but again, pressure applied. David Burke comes after it, wins it, challenged strongly. Richie Hogan is uh, the one who is making way and the player who's going to come on here is Richie Power. Well, you can see from Richie Hogan's reaction, very disappointed. Uh, obviously, had missed a lot of training. You know, I thought he was still doing OK, he was dangerous. Colin Fenley not in the game much, that's a big call again by Brian Cody, we've seen many of them over the years. So Richie Power on, yellow card there as you may have noticed for Jared Aylward. Here's Conor Cooney. Hand pass back as far as David Burke. Immediately pressure applied. Good pressure. Michael Fenley. His brother Collard in there in the yellow helmet. Final clearances by Dohi Burke. One man inside forward line would appear. Colin Fenley. Can't take it. Hanbury digging in. Richie Power in there as well. And you can see his leg very, very heavily strapped up from uh, a legacy of injuries he sustained over the recent past. Again, the referee forced to throw the ball in. Walter Welch getting his stick to it. Jerry Elwood coming across. In the end, it is David Burke. Swings around off his left. Missed initially by Whelan. Picked up here by... Joe Canning, and they need a big final 10 minutes from Joe Canning. They need a big final 10 minutes from everybody if they're to take the cup, and they're under pressure, and that time a hefty challenge by Conor Fogarty is penalised by the referee. And the referee has been...
might be more than a word. He's got to get a yellow as well, it would appear. Yeah, great work right there again by Joe Canning. Forced, you know, he lost possession originally, then won it back. Well, I didn't see a card. Why do you see Joe Canning hit this one? And he's hit it badly. He's hit it wide. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it might have been his first touch of the second half. He's been absolutely starved of possession. He looked a bit casual over that free, and that's a very poor wide at this stage of the game. 23, John Power is on now as well. And Ger Aylward is the one who's gone off. 117 to 17 points. Well, Kilkenny, who played poor enough by their standards of the first half, were very fortunate to be only three points behind. They have up the ante in the second half. They may be strapped for players in some respects of quality and experience, but my goodness, they're making everything count. For Kilkenny has now scored. It's like normal service was resumed and uh, the genie is out of the bottle. Once more, Kieran Joyce. Under pressure is Johnny Cohen. Gets it back down again. It's getting to the stage where they need a goal pretty soon. Goal well, if they're to stage a major finish to this match. Out comes Torek Mannion. Avoids the hook of Walter Welch. They've got to get some possession down there. They've got to make it count. It's the youngster, it's Conor Whelan. And he's put it to the wrong side of the post, and he's put it wide. Yeah, did the goalie get a little flick to that? We'll see it again here now. It's a question of whether or not the ball was out over the line, I guess, before the keeper did no. get the stick to it. No, I think it's a wide ball, and very poor effort there for Conor Whelan. He watched... He comes out, beautiful ball, the last few minutes of an All-Ireland, showing that composure to pick out Colin Fenley and he stuck it over the band. Great pass on for uh, Cyril Donlan. Lally normally a centre-back, he's gone into midfield, come centre-back, centre-field really. Murphy's puck out for Kilkenny, towards Walter Welch, over there as well, Owen Narkin, two men so good in the air, the clearance isn't a good one. It comes straight to Porrick Welch, and Porrick Welch would love to score in the All-Ireland he's done it yeah, that's a great score from Tariq Welch he's had a brilliant game I think today again he was brilliant in the final here last year uh, not much talk about him coming up to the match it was all about Killian Buckley who had a quiet first half better in the second half needed a score but between that one and the Conor Whelan effort a little while ago the confidence levels are beginning to just ebb away and drain away now at this stage. You know, it's nearly as if Galway thought the game was over at half-time. They came out, first half all guns blazing, huge work rate, huge intensity. But you have to do that for the whole 70 minutes. And, you know, Kilkenny just closed up shop at half-time around the half-back line. Michael Fenley in particular has been immense, as he was last year in the, in the final against Tipperary. And uh, Galway just dropped their work rate, and that's the main difference. Shane Maloney, who rescued... Galway right at the very end of the Tipperary match and got the winner that day has just come on for Jason Flynn who had a great first half with uh, Freeze and one great point but didn't do an awful lot in the second half he has now been replaced and they've had to make a lot of changes there put four between them They'll have five minutes or a little under of the 70, but there'll surely be another two minutes added on to that. Seven points from Joe Canning, all of them in the first half, nothing at all in the second. Can he rectify that situation? He seems to have done so with his eighth. There is still a pulse, there's still a possibility for Galway. Four minutes to go. Yeah, they, into the seat. They need the next score, Jared. They need to get back to a goal. When you're in a goal in hurling, you, you know, you're obviously in the game and the game can turn very, very quickly. Owen Murphy's goal has uh, rarely been under threat, however, it has to be said. Galway trying to win this in their own half-back line. David Collins down there, number 22, in the thick of it, but it's Kilkenny who emerged with it. Walter Welch trying to set up an opportunity there for one of the powers, a bit like last... by Walter Welsh, play continues, 
And it's uh, Colin Fennelly now taking that pass in his stride, 22 metres out, and it flashes over the bar. A second for Colin Fennelly. One of those fiercely determined competitors for Kilkenny, gifted, a little unpredictable, came on in 2012 on the uh, replay and got one of the three goals that day. Two points here today, might be enough, five between them. Yeah, he's a huge engine, he stays going strong to the end and, you know, two points there in the last few minutes, massive from him. Cahal Mannion, it's a goal that Galway needed at this stage. Kilkenny denying them, however, just... Uh, and camp there around that D area and refusing to yield anything for the tribesmen. <laughs> Kilkenny have shown the resolve and the determination, but it's uh, Cahal Mannion who emerges with it, gets it back there as far as Conor Cooney. The man has been out of Hurley for so long, has missed another one. And now they have had three wides in a row there. That's 12 wides in all in this match. And he realises it's certainly not going their way. Hasn't given up the, uh, the ghost, however. Lost by seven in the Leinster final to Kilkenny. Promised they'd be back. But it hasn't really got any better. Five between them. They need something special. Porrick Mannion all the way down. Trying to slip it in there towards Shane Maloney, but this time it's Paul Murphy who keeps a very close eye on him. Great catch, Owen Larkin. Laid off as far as TJ. But Burke goes a second time. They have a winning look about them at this stage, if there was any doubt. They have dominated the second half. They've been much the better team in the uh, 33, nearly 34 minutes we've had so far. And they have opened up a six-point lead, or is it a... It's a five-point lead. Six-point, Jerry. Six, that's bad. Walter Welch to make it seven. Two for Walter Welch in this final. Yeah, this is what they do. You know, Richie Power there, you mentioned him. Came on last year for his first ga game of the year against Limerick in the All Ireland semi final. Changed that game, had a brilliant final, and to come on here in the final again has made a big difference, has created a couple of scores there. And Walter Watch is in a massive second half again. It's like they've turned on the tap after half time. Again, he picks it up here. He's a very daring young player who has given everything he's got, Conor Wheel, in this, in this match. I'm not sure is it going to be enough on this particular afternoon. There are going to be two minutes of added time. Galway have a free on the 20-metre line. They simply have to go for a goal here. It's uh, Joe Canning's turn. Eight points so far. A quiet word there from Shane Maloney to Joe Canning, the 26-year-old. This has to go into the back of the net, and they have to hope that there's time for another one. Seven points adrift, he hits it, it's trickling around on the line, and it's TJ Reid who's back there, trying to work his way out, forced out over the... So once again, it's Joe Canning who's going to have to take this. Second time of asking, it slips through and they have a goal. Goal and eight now for Joe Canning. So 122 to 118, but we've already played one minute of the added time. It was uh, second time of asking. Yeah, great strike, Jar, but you know, the same thing I often say, too many people on the line. See TJ Reid there behind uh, Paul Murphy, just missed it and trickled into the net. So it's a, a four-point game, and goal went... you think about it 35 national trophies this will be 
when this one finishes in a few seconds' time. What a record over the years. That one drops in there and drops over the bar, I think. No, it's gone to the left, it's gone to the left, and disappointment there for Richie Power. But good to see him back. They're counting down the seconds, the Kilkenny crowd. Forrick Mannion plays it out of defence to Richie Reid once to uh, TJ Reid once again, and it's now all over. And the cheering is Kilkenny who are cheering. Brian Cody and his backroom team celebrate once again. Kilkenny have retained their title and won another All Ireland final. And the